In this part of the world, financing business ideas remain one of the major setbacks, especially for startup entities. The interest rates are killing and a disincentive to businesses. The situation has created a deep gap in raising funds for businesses in Ghana. In 2004, we gave birth to the Venture Capital Trust Fund in an apparent response to filling this challenge or responding to this challenge. On the show today, we'll be looking at this whole business of venture capital financing or equity financing and what it exactly it means. What has been the successes since the birth of the Venture Capital Trust Fund in 2004? Join me as we listen to the story of Venture Capital Trust Fund and equity financing as told us by the Chief Executive Officer of the Venture Capital Trust Fund, Mr. Daniel Duku. Welcome to the show doing business in Ghana. My name is Sana Atoglu. Mr. Duku, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. Mr. Duku, let me ask you, what's the difference between venture capital financing and equity finance? Are they the same thing? Um, I think it's similar. VC financing can be both in the form of debt or equity, but it is really what we call risk capital, making sure that you put in money that is supposed to mature in a future date. Equity financing is basically taking some level of stake or ownership in a business or an entity. But when you talk about VC financing, like I said, it could be both debt or equity or the, uh, uh, somewhere in the middle of both. Okay. So what, what, what are you running? Which, which of these models are you running or are you operating on? When government set up the Venture Capital Trust Fund then, the issue was to, just like you said, make sure that the gap which existed in making sure that financing for SMEs were difficult, that venture capital was going to come in and fill that gap. In that position, we took the equity form of financing because most other institutional investors in Ghana, institutions in Ghana, provide debt. You know, so we are mostly in equity financing. And that is when we come into your company, we take part ownership of your company for a period, then we exit. That's what we call equity financing, taking part ownership of the company. In other words, we run the company with you. We are part owners with you. We might take, the law allows us to take up to about 49% equity ownership of the company. Then after a number of years, we come up with an exit strategy. That is a concept of venture capital. And it's long term, anywhere between seven to 10 years with some level of returns either you know, what we call either a healthy rate or an internal rate of return that we might set for ourselves over the period. But for Ghana, like I said, and for what we are doing on venture capital, we are mostly as if emphasizing our investments using the equity strategy. You know how our businesses are set up where uh, it's basically one man owned. Um, how challenging has it been for you as venture capital trust fund going into some businesses, established businesses, and taking equity from, from these businesses? I think that's a very, very good question. I mean, we've had a lot of applications that we have worked on at Venture Capital Trust Fund and also through our fund managers. And usually, almost when it gets to the end of the process, either the husband or the husband or the wife will come up and say, listen, we don't want to participate. Are these guys going to be part owners of this company? This is a new concept in this part of the world, but when you look at other parts of emerging markets, Asia, Latin America, even in South America, South Africa, and even in Nigeria, VC markets are really growing. And of course, as much as these challenges have been for us, we are still doing our efforts in educating the Ghanaian how important for us to be able to invest with them, create wealth, let their businesses grow, and we exit at a future date. What's your mandate per how the fund was set up? Like I said, the Venture Capital Trust Fund was set up by an Act of Parliament, and it's Act 680 of 2004. And the mandate just basically is twofold. One, to promote the venture capital industry in Ghana, make sure that the industry grows in terms of VC and private equity, and also to provide what we call low-cost, long-term financing for SMEs. 
that's basically the mandate. Low cost, how low? Basically, I mean, what, what it means is that we, the rates in terms of we establishing our facilities will be basically a policy rate. We just want to make sure that we provide extreme good financing for SMEs at a lower cost than what the normal historical banks will do. And we'll do it at policy, sometimes policy plus 100 basis points or even at policy rate, depending on how the facility is structured. Where have you gotten to uh, when, when you look at your mandate and your operations? On a scale, let's say for, you're supposed to get to a certain point at this time. Where do you think you've gotten to on the ladder? I think on the ladder, I should say we should be, if on a scale of 1 to 10, I should place ourselves maybe 7, 8, moving on that ladder. Like I said, it is not necessarily venture capital finance. To be able to see how effective and how the results have been will be when the shareholders or fund managers return back funds to investors in the future. Okay. And like I said, this is between 7 to 10 years from now. Now we are now 6, 7 years where most of our fund managers have come to the end of the investment cycles. So as long as this investment period has ended and shareholders start getting money back, then we'll be able to see how we're doing. You're still watching Doing Business in Ghana on Capital Television. My name is Sena Atukre. And our guest today is the Chief Executive Officer of the Venture Capital Trust Fund, Daniel Duku. Today we're looking at equity financing and what the Venture Capital Trust Fund is doing. <music> For most Ghanaians, owning their own homes has been impossible for various reasons. Let us introduce you to Kingdom Capital Ghana Limited, a real estate and building construction firm with your safety and security at heart. Kingdom Capital has within the Kingdom City Enclave litigation-free serviced plots available for sale at Katapo Kwabenya, Ayi Mensa near Pediasi Lodge, a man from Dentra, Eburi, Somanya near Akuse Junction, Gomwa near White Sands, Dawenya near Central University, Kwekrum near Ojobi, and Ademan near Pukwase. The other good news is we have special discounted rates for groups. The prices are affordable. You can call or visit any of our offices at Dan Soman near Datu School. Reach us on 0302-327-941 or at Wager on 0501-339-701. You may also pick a form and make payment at any Capital Line microfinance branches at Mataheko, Dansoman, Bubuashi, Eburi, or Insawam, or reach us on 0302-327-941 of 0501-339-706, 0501-339-717 for more details. You can also log on to our website, www.kingdomcityaccra.com. Kingdom City, combination of comfort and secure lifestyle. Life affords everyone many opportunities for self-advancement. Just a few can see. your business to the next level should define how and where you want to take it and leave the rest for us to do for all your business trade and finance loans personal loans educational and rent advance loans investment advisory services talk to capital line investments limited we offer very competitive interest rates and give you the best customer services in processing your loan facilities. <laughs> Stop groaning in the dark. Take that step and come to us for your life-changing and transforming moments. Contact us on 030 
0606-503-050-1339708. Send us an email on capitalline.invest at gmail.com or visit our website www.capitallinegroup.com. Capital Line Investments Limited, your total solutions point for your financial challenges. You're still watching Doing Business in Ghana, and my guest is the Chief Executive Officer of the Venture Capital Trust Fund, Mr. Daniel Duku. Uh, Mr. Duku, let me ask you, um, how easy or cumbersome is it for businesses or, and individuals uh, to access funds from any of your fund managers or from the Venture Capital Trust Fund itself? I think that's a very interesting question. Uh, one thing that most people might do is that they are the, the, the basic requirements for accessing funds from our fund managers. And that might be having a business plan, you know, which is quite detailed, a lot of stuff, you know, based on what sort of projects you want to do. What most people do is that they don't necessarily prepare into detail when they come to the fund managers, and it takes a, a while for them to be able to do work. When all documentation are in place, and looking for a facility from one of our family. It shouldn't take anything more than maybe, maybe 90 days. But when documentation is not in place, you're bringing in a documentation for land, and the land is not registered, and looking to build a hospital on there, those things create problem, problems. But land continuing education is quite changing that, and we're hoping that it's going to get better as we move on. Um, are there any interest rates that you look at in terms of your operations or dealing with the um, with the individuals who come accessing your funds? We, just like I said from the beginning, is that we are taking equity position. When we are taking equity, equity position, nothing like interest rate comes in. In other words, we come in and say, listen, your company is, company A is at $100,000, right? Let's take part ownership of this company up to 49%. We invest in your company help with management, help with marketing, help with you designing your products and services. The company will grow to an X amount, we exit, then we take our 49% and leave. So basically, if, you, if you're looking to have your business grow without looking for debt, then your fastest, easiest way is to go to equity financing through VC. Mr. Duku, you've invested so much and in so many companies across the country. How are they performing? How are they, how are they doing? Have you started recouping any investments at all? That's a, at all? That's a very good point. I think we have um, invested maybe now in almost about maybe 55 to 60 SMEs. Oh. What I should say is that, I should say on the average, if I was to give them a performance, yeah. there will be about C plus to B. Okay. You know. Which have about maybe about almost about 35 or 40 percent of the companies performing well, and some of them not performing. But that is the essence of venture capital. Okay. Some of these companies need injection in terms of marketing, in terms of product design, mm -hmm. in terms of management, in terms of maybe even finances and setting them up. But so there's been I wouldn't say it's been all rules. There's been challenges in terms of these things, and sometimes we even have challenges with the promoters. Okay. They'll get to a point and say, listen, you guys are getting too much into my business. I don't want to continue this anymore. Okay. And it's all a learning process. But like I said, most of these investee companies and the fund managers are supposed to return funds to us over a period of about 10 years. Okay. So while some might not be doing that, your typical PE transaction will be, will be like out of 10 companies, three or four of them will return funds back to you and make up for all, all the losses of the other six. Okay. So that's a structure. And for the, for the ones that are not doing well, the trust fund has set up a monitoring team. The fund managers also have set up monitoring teams, carefully monitoring them to see what the lags are, and making sure that those things are corrected. So it's been challenging somehow, but we are still on it, making sure that we succeed. Let's look at your exit plan. Um, how does it go? How, 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 how do you do it? Uh, you get into the company, let's assume you invest 10 million US dollars and you say, okay, in 10 years I need to leave. 
how do you run that exit process? That's, that's, that's a very good question. In Ghana, trying to create exits was quite difficult, and that is what most um, of our what we call DFIs will look at. When you look at a place like Ghana, which is more of an emerging market, and markets are quite extremely not much short. One, that is why we have the Ghana Stock Exchange. The best exit for any of these companies, if it is a matured company that could list on the stock exchange, will be, do, will be to list to exit through the stock exchange, either through um, a private placement or an IPO, which is an initial public offering. So if that cannot be achieved, then the simplest one we have is a trade sale, where that, that facility or that entity is done through a, a trade sale or what we call also a management buyout. We can have management, those who we came into the agreement, buy us out. Or that's something which we also call, which is also common in other emerging markets, we call it a second fund. We set up, we set up money aside every year. Every, money, every year we set money aside to make exit easy. So basically if we know that we're going to exit at you know, 10 times, you know, maybe at a certain point, that is set up, set out, and that's what we call an exit, uh, that was what we call a second fund. So we can use the second fund strategy, the trade sale management buyout, or an IPO. And just to add on that, in Ghana, the stock exchange had large companies listed on exchange. And because we thought about exits for our investing companies in the future, we signed a, mor a memorandum of understanding with the Ghana Stock Exchange about two years ago to establish what we call the GAX, which was the Ghana Alternative Exchange, where we provided about $200,000 to assist the Ghana Stock Exchange create a second listing for SMEs. And that has been ongoing. So at least these smaller companies can go to the Stock Exchange and do an IPO. And so, so far, like I said, um, as much as we haven't had a few exits yet and it's getting to that point, any of these techniques could be used. But we mostly, started exits yet. we haven't started exits yet, but one or two exits have occurred at our, later, at our earlier stages okay. where we use the management buyout and trade sale. Oh. So what it means is that the, this platform that you're creating doesn't necessarily mean the companies that want to list should be your investee companies. No, of course not. Any SME at all can just SME, so that SME. means you are empowering the system definitely. itself. Definitely, because I mean, of course, I mean the capital market is quite important. I mean, and if you look at how the capital markets are able to generate funds, it is important that we strengthen that. And if SMEs constitute almost sixty percent of GDP, it's important that an avenue for less than on stock exchange is created, and if venture capital can provide some level of funding, and I know we did it, that. Um, Stock exchange itself provided money, and I know Africa Development Bank also provided money. So three key institutions that are quite important for us to be able to do this. And I think we've done it, and the stock exchange have done it, and I think we should give them credit for that, and it's working. And hopefully, we should look at the medium to long term. We expect more SMEs to let stock exchange. From the Ghana Stock Exchange, let me ask you about the Securities and Exchange Commission. What partnership, what relationship do you have or are you building with them as well? well? One, the Securities and Exchange Commission is the underlining what we call regulator for this industry. In fact, if you look at, that's a very good question, um, Senna, because when you look at this industry, so far, it is not well regulated. At first, VC was on under the Bank of Ghana that has been taken off. And the Security and Exchange Commission has found it in its wisdom to be able to develop rules and regulations for VC, what we call venture capital and private equity in Ghana. And they say to themselves, listen, what better partner could we get than Venture Capital Trust Fund? So basically, they have given us the mandate to be able to create stakeholders from this industry and develop market rules, market rules for Ghana. And of course, you know, that goes under Securities and Exchange Commission, and we are leading the effort in terms of doing that. Congratulations for Thank that. Thank you so much. You're still watching Doing Business in Ghana, and today we are looking at venture capital financing or equity financing, and we're concentrating on the Venture Capital Trust Fund. <laughs>
For most Ghanaians, owning their own homes has been impossible for various reasons. Let us introduce you to Kingdom Capital Ghana Limited, a real estate and building construction firm with your safety and security at heart. Kingdom Capital has within the Kingdom City Enclave litigation free serviced plots available for sale at Katapo Kwabenya, Ayi Mensa near Pediasi Lodge, a man from Dentra, Eburi. Somanya near Akuse Junction, Gomwa near White Sands, Dawenya near Central University, Kwekrum near Ojobi, and Ademan near Pukwase. The other good news is we have special discounted rates for groups. The prices are affordable. You can call or visit any of our offices at Dan Soman near Datu School. Reach us on 0302-327-941 or at Wager on 0501-339-701. You may also pick a form and make payment at any Capital Line microfinance branches at Mataheko, Dansoman, Bubuashi, Eburi, or Insawam, or reach us on 0302-327-941 of 0501-339-706, 0501-339-717 for more details. You can also log on to our website, www.kingdomcityaccra.com. Kingdom City, combination of comfort and secure lifestyle. Life affords everyone many opportunities for self-advancement. Just a few can see. your business to the next level you define how and where you want to take it and leave the rest for us to do for all your business trade and finance loans personal loans educational and rent advance loans investment advisory services talk to capital line investments limited we offer very competitive interest rates and give you the best customer services in processing your loan facilities. <laughs> Stop groaning in the dark. Take that step and come to us for your life-changing and transforming moments. Contact us on 030 70 321 030 73 0501 Send us an email on Dot com. Capital Line Investments Limited, your total solutions point for your financial challenges. What is gain and what is it doing? One thing I think you've noticed in Ghana is that we have a lot of entrepreneurs coming up. So what the Ghana Angel Investor is doing is that we put in a few angels. We should have maybe about maybe 20 angels now. Almost, and I, if I was to go through the list, some of the top CEOs in the country, where entrepreneurs can bring deals to these angels. They will look at them, it's nothing related to venture capital, and say, listen, you bring in a deal, you want to establish maybe X product. Angel feels that this deal is good, and they put money into that transaction. Or say, listen, do a presentation. What we've been doing is that Angel, Ghana Angel Investor Network has been doing what we call pitch sessions, okay. where in the future, I think we'll be talking to you about, you know, I mean, putting them live on TV, where you have a set of angels that will come in there, an entrepreneur will come in there and present deals to these angels for financing. So far, we've done about three of these pitch sessions. I think we are in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the session of closing about two deals nice. where some angels have promised almost about almost about if i'm not mistaken almost about two to three hundred two to two fifty thousand dollar investment in one entrepreneur wow. 
So these are things that we are doing to also help entrepreneurs grow. And um, we've set up a whole office that is the Ghana Angel Investor Network where entrepreneurs can present business plans. We can even assist. We even assist them in making sure that their business plans are in good shape. We can have we have what we call mentoring sections and all that. So there's a lot of things we're doing. Just like I said, through mediums like this, we can let Ghana and the world know the good work that venture capital is doing, and also when it comes to angel investing. Okay. okay. So basically, you're just facilitating a a, a process. Yes, we are facilitating another process of making sure that entrepreneurs get funding, if not through venture capital through angel investor network which is across the world these angel investors do not also are they also run along the way or along the line of equity financing no they they, 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 they don't really go through the vc principle they can decide listen somebody has presented you know a deal that they're looking for hundred thousand to do x product angel depend on the facts the financials the market the product the services whatever an agent can decide, listen, this sounds like a good transaction. I want to put in 80000 for 50% equ equity or debt, whatever it is. Okay. And it, de it depends on the negotiation That's the angel will have with the entrepreneur. Oh. So just promoting businesses alongside what we're doing, okay. basically. One thing that I read about Venture Capital Trust Fund, Ghana, impact investing. Impact investing, what is it? That's a very, very good point. And I think impact investing is what we call a new asset class that is coming up. Is doing any sort, any, any, any sort of investment that doesn't only have, that have, that only have financial implications, but it has social impact that is, that is allocated to it. So basically, when you want to do an investment, not only on its financial application, but it includes a social return. That's what we call impact investing. And we should be, I should say that in 2012, we're lucky enough to get a facility of $150,000 from the Rockefeller Foundation in New York for us to be able to do research into impact investing into Ghana. And um, that research was done and was quite successful. And that Rockefeller recommended that we pass it on to, to an institution that will cal carry out what we call advocacy and research into that. That led venture capital into as, uh, what we call um, signing an MOU with the Gimpa School. So Gimpa, in 2013, we signed an MOU with Gimpa and established what we call the Gimpa Institute for Impact Investing. That is now one school at Gimpa. That looks specifically at impact investing. This is new, like a new baby. And if I was to give you the figures, it is estimated that within the next, about between the next five to 10 years, cash flow into impact investing is going to be in a range almost about 600 to about almost 700 million US dollars. Okay. So the earlier we start doing assessments, advocacy and research into impact investing areas in terms of, let's say, Ghana, recycling, recycling, green, sanitation, sanitation yeah. green stuff, yeah. you know, all areas that we can also assist government. Then the burden doesn't only come on government. Then we can either have institutional investment that will bring in money through GIMPA for specific impact investments. Like I said, investing not only based on financial reason, but having its social implications. So it's not, it's not a philanthropic business? No, it's of course not. But the business should have a social impact to it. It does not come in, in making money and leave. A typical example would be, listen, how do we solve the san sanitation problem in, the, in Ghana? Well, there's financial return, there's social impact to it. You know, so that is what we call impact investment. It should impact, have, have some level of impact on the society. But other VC products we might be doing, or services we might be doing as venture capital, looking at the bottom line and also looking at the numbers, basically. But this will have beyond financial return. There should be a social impact on it, beyond financial returns. Okay. And that okay. is what we call impact investing. Like I said, it's quite new, and it is good that Ghana has started, and now venture capital has taken the lead and passed it on to a renowned institution like GEPA that has taken up and established a whole center for it. 
how has the economic challenges affected your um, process of raising funds or resources? I think somewhere last year, we were grateful enough to have a facility that was granted to us by the China Exim Bank of 150 million. Okay. And it's now going through finance for the in, in, initial and also other considerations in terms of guarantees and other stuff. Apart from that fact, we are now also looking at other institutional investors that are also coming, going to join with us as shareholders and bringing in funds. Okay. Because when you partner with venture capital, there are rules and exceptions. There are so many benefits you get as an investor in terms of tax benefits okay. that the act allows you to enjoy. So apart from government, of course, challenges have been everywhere. While there has been delay, I know government has its eye on venture capital and promoting the sector, the sector very well, and also the SME, the SME sector, which is the engine of growth of this country. So government has assured us in so many ways. At this time, we are highly possible that we might even get a facility also of about 20 million from EDIF, where we've presented proposals for all that. So as much as it's been challenging for other parts of the sectors, we have been gracious enough because government puts its eye on SME growth and sees that debt financing might not necessarily be the only avenue for entrepreneurs and for other, just like other countries in emerging markets, looking at equity financing may be the option. In wrapping up, let's look at um, the future for Venture Capital Trust Fund. Where are you heading to? I think the future looks good. Of, of course, there's been a few challenges. One thing we've realized is um, certain parts of the act that allows us to work. So what we're doing now is reviewing the act and through the Minister of Finance, how we can also take it to cabinet for approval in terms of having worked with this act for almost 10 years. 10 years yeah. What are some of the constraints we've had and how we can make sure it works better moving forward? The trustee has given management that assignment. We're working on that. But then one thing was that the industry has grown and is growing in Ghana. We see a lot of PE firms moving into Ghana, angel investment coming in there, other avenues in terms of our alignment with SEC, the Ghana Stock Exchange. Venture Capital has made a name for itself. One thing I even forgot is that recently we had a meeting with the president of the African Development Bank. We're meeting him um, quite soon in Kigali, and they are thinking of putting money into venture capital. So the future is for us to be able to create more funds, become more of a fund of funds, and maybe gradually move away create our own SPV and move away from government, where we'll be able to be able to go out and seek for fun more funding without government support. Because government did this to be able to assist, like you said, SMEs grow over time. It's about time that we look at the laws that govern us and see how we can really shift ourselves from government, become an entity by ourselves, and become what we call, we call in this industry as a fund of funds. Like I said, we bring in the funds and share it through our shareholders. So that is what the medium to long term strategies, and we started by reviewing the act to make sure that those impediments that were in our way are striked, are striked out and approved by cabinet so that we can move on. Mr. Duku, thanks very much for the opportunity and for the time. And thank you for having me. We appreciate your time. Very well. That was the Chief Executive Officer of the Venture Capital Trust Fund, Mr. Daniel Duku, on doing business in Ghana. My name is Sena Atoklo. See you next week.